What is up guys, ForceNet here back with another iOS developer related video, but this time we're going to talk about travel setups, in particular my ideal travel setup. So let's, let's talk about it a bit. If I were to go traveling right now, I would want the top of the line MacBook Pro. Not the MacBook, not the Air, not anything else, so the top of the line MacBook Pro. As fast as I can get, probably as much storage as I can get, although I'll have external hard drives, mainly because I'll be doing iOS development as well as video editing. But with iOS development, you would still want the fastest thing there is, and why not get it, except for the whole money issue. That will run you probably $2,500 unless you get upgraded storage and CPU. Instead of $2,500, it'll cost you about $3,200, but I feel like that'll last you a long time, so it'll be worth it. Up next, although there would be the 15-inch MacBook Pro, I would want a portable monitor. I've been looking at a few, one being the Asus 15.6 inch 1080p 169B plus and that will run you about $180. There's another one that I believe it's an older model. It's a 168B plus. I could be mistaken or it's a 168B I believe and that one seems to be very similar in specs but the B plus uh, pushes ahead a little bit. I don't know if the price difference is worth it. It's definitely something to look into if you're interested in that. I was also looking at the Slide Enjoy, which is basically something that hooks onto the back of your MacBook Pro display. And it has two monitors that slide out. So once they're both sliding out, you have a tri monitor setup, a three monitor setup that you can fold back if you're sitting with a client face to face a client could see your you know one of your displays behind and you could see your display ahead or you could set it up as a triangle it make it look pretty cool if you're at a conference like a conference table type deal and there's a lot of a lot of things that you could do with that i don't know how the displays actually are because once i saw the price of roughly 460 dollars and that's pre-ordered you wouldn't get it until december 2016 right now it's october 2016 it's $460 pre-ordered, and I, I feel like I, I would rather buy two portables for less than that, two portable monitors for less than that price than actually getting that. Although convenient and kind of cool, I couldn't justify spending $460 on that. Along with those, I would want a Mac stand. So basically, it's a stand where you put your MacBook Pro up. So it's essentially just running as a computer and a monitor. You're not going to use the keyboard or trackpad at this point. I was looking at two. One was recommended to me because I was talking about having a traveling portable setup and one company called Roost, they have a laptop stand for the MacBook Pro or for any laptop, but in my case, the MacBook Pro, but it's about $75. It's portable. It folds down into a very, you know, probably like a stick that's like this and very thin, but I don't know if I could justify $75 because there's another company called Medius. Not sure if I pronounced that right. I'll put it on the screen and they have an iRiser stand, that's what they call it, and that's only $40, but it also folds up. Instead of being like a pole, it folds up like your, you know, flat, like your portable monitor or your MacBook. So I feel like that would fit better in your bag with the things I just listed, with your monitor and with your MacBook. I feel like having a stick in there would kind of, kind of mess it, you know, it wouldn't be as symmetrical as you'd like. If you just had a really thin little stand that you could fold up and put in there, I feel like it would be better. And for cheaper, it's something to look into. Since you're going to have that up on the stand, you're going to need a keyboard and a mouse. For keyboard, I was looking at something thin that is easy to travel with. So there's two in mind, well three in mind. One being the Magic Keyboard by Apple, but that's a hundred dollars. And I feel like something like the Anchor ultra compact one for I believe $20 is a way better deal and you wouldn't mind losing like if you're traveling all the time you're gonna you're gonna lose stuff and you wouldn't mind losing that although you don't want to there's that but there's also a company called EC technology who make a tri-fold keyboard this is $35 I saw a review on MS Tech's channel recently and I must say it's pretty cool of course on these compact you know thin travel keyboards all the keys are going to be pretty close together but I feel like that would be easy to kind of adjust to and I feel like I'll probably end up going with one of those two a really cool one is the Oreo Orei I don't know how to pronounce it by Orei Artisan but they make wooden keyboards wooden trackpads it's really really cool company and all of its wooden of course you have the electronic components inside and although 
It's really, really cool. I know I have quite the vocabulary, cool, 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 but it's $130. If you want a leather case, it ranges from $30 or $50 because that'll be recycled or genuine leather uh, case for it, respectively. So $30 for the recycled and $50 for the genuine. And on to the mouse. So I really just, I don't know what kind of mouse I want. I want to have some mouse that's portable. I don't want the Apple mouse. It's pretty ugly. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to buy that. That's, that's hundred percent sure. I want something that maybe has at least two program, programmable buttons. It needs to be wireless. All this stuff needs to be wireless, including the keyboard, because I wouldn't want a bunch of wires running, running around in my bag. I'd rather have a Bluetooth or a USB connector. So the mouse, I don't know. I've been leaning towards maybe one of those like RickNet or I don't know what it's called. But if I were to go that route, I'd probably try to find something under $50. Uh, I don't know. If, if I really found something that I really liked, then I would be able to spend more. But there's not really one that, you know, that pops out to me. So I don't know exactly what I would want or, or get. When I was asking some people on Reddit, one guy recommended getting a trackball. Well, he uses a trackball. He said he's been using it for the past 20 years. So I, I checked it out. Pretty cool. It looks a lot of fun to use. It's a Kensington Kensington Expert Mouse Wireless Trackball for $140. And you have the trackball in the middle, and right around that you have something that you're able to scroll up and down on a web page or whatever. And then you have four programmable buttons on all or surrounding both of those things I just mentioned. And it looks like a lot of fun to use. I don't I've never used one to be honest. I all I do is I've used my trackpad on my Mac, and I normally use two hands with that, and I've used my mouse. I feel like a trackball would be kind of fun, but if I want to play any games, I would have to have some type of backup mouse. I've seen people try to play games on it, and it's not pretty. But that brings us over to the trackpad. Not the whole gaming thing, just like trackball, trackpad, mouse. A trackpad, I mentioned the Oreo, their trackpad, they have a wooden one. Don't know how they did it, but it's really cool. So. That is is $150. Don't know if I get that. I understand most of them are expensive. There's one that's, I believe it's the Apple Magic 2 for $130. And then the Apple also has the Magic and that's like $65 wherever you can find it, give or take five bucks or so. So if I were to go trackpad, I don't know. I feel like I'd go trackball before trackpad, but I feel like I'd rather have a mouse before all of those. So it'd probably be mouse if I find something I like, that trackball I mentioned and then trackpad. So if you have a mouse recommendation, link it below. And for the record, everything I mentioned in this video is going to be linked in the description box below. So if, in case you want to check it out on your own, it's down there. So right now we have our laptop, we have a laptop stand, and we have a portable monitor or two, who knows. And then we have a keyboard and a mouse. We're pretty set on that, but I would also like to have some type of USB hub slash card reader. So I have an Insignia 3.0 a card reader right now, but what would be really convenient is if that card reader had USB ports, and I know there's companies who make that. So I know I, I found one called Sabrent for $20, and I believe I saw this on another MS Tech video. I like to watch MS Tech videos, what can I say? But the Sabrent has three USB ports and, and can take my SD card. It takes a few other cards, but the only thing I ever use is my SD card for my camera here. and. I think that would come in handy. You know, it's pretty compact, pretty sleek looking for wherever you set it up. I would need something, something along those lines. And then finally, since being an iOS developer, you need to test your apps on devices, not just on the simulator. I would want an iPhone stand. So if I'm sitting at my desk, I have my keyboard, mouse, laptop on a stand and my portable monitor, but I would also like to have my phone sitting right there as well in case I want to test on it or just so it's not sitting on my desk or in my pocket, it's just a nice display. Whether that be a docking station or a stand, I don't know. If it were a docking station, I saw this really cool uh, Native Union docking station that I, I really like, but it's, it's uh, about $60, I believe. I could be mistaken. It's a really cool docking station, but I feel like I'd rather just get a stand, which a, a stand I found was an Anchor Multi-Angle Luno stand for just 10 bucks. And you can't even hook up your charger to this one because you're not, it's not in the air, it's kind of on the ground, so you can't really charge while using this stand, which may be a dilemma or a downfall to this stand. 
but there weren't really any portable stands that kind of had the phone sitting up in the air. It just kind of propped them up. So portability or something that's kind of bulky in your backpack that you can charge while, you know, it's on the stand. I don't know, you have to figure out for yourself. I think I'd rather just get the portable one and charge my phone at night. Or if I needed to charge my phone there, I'd put it sideways. Who knows? I don't know, I figured out. So that's it, my ideal traveling iOS developer setup that hopefully will be put into use by me in the next two years. And until next time, have a good one.